Hello YouTube! You may be wondering what interlacing is. This is interlacing. This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. Hello YouTube! In this two-part series, we take a look at interlacing. But because interlacing has its roots in a nice huge chunk of history, we're going to spend this episode talking about the past and to brush you up on a little bit of background. So rewind about 50 or so years. Televisions were a pretty new concept, with cathode ray tube or CRT models being the only option. Here's how a CRT works. An electron gun at the back of the unit fires electrons at a phosphor screen in front. When an electron strikes a phosphor, it glows, but only for a short amount of time. Now, the electron gun doesn't fire off like a trigger-happy SMG gunner. Instead, it fires electrons in a very consistent order. Starting in the top left, the beam moves from left to right. It then moves onto the next line and continues, line by line. This, however, creates a number of issues. Back in the day, Hardware restrictions meant that the electron gun moved a little slower than desired. If we were to scan out each and every line from top to bottom, it will take a little too long, causing the upper parts of the picture to start dimming before the electron gun could go back to refresh it. As you can imagine, this creates an unpleasant flickering effect. The solution to this turned out to be interlacing. Instead of scanning all lines from top to bottom, creating a complete frame, the electron gun was configured to scan all of the even lines from top to bottom, creating what's known as a field. Then to go back up and fill in the odd lines, creating a second field. Since there is an equal number of lines to be scanned, the time taken to complete one full interlace pass is roughly equivalent to the time it takes for a progressive one. That is, a scanning pass that takes all the lines from top to bottom. However, the flicker issues are no longer present since each area is essentially scanned twice as often. The first set of lines have hardly begun to fade when the second set is drawn on. Now, at the same time, there was another problem. Signal standards determined that 25 or 30 frames, depending on whether you are in a PAL or NTSC region, to be displayed per second. This wasn't quite enough to fluidly display motion and there was no way to add more frames to that without increasing bandwidth or destroying the standard. The solution to this was also in interlacing. Since interlacing meant that two fields were displayed at slightly offset time intervals, it was eventually decided that each field could carry imagery at slightly offset intervals. This means if we were to look at a single interlaced frame made by combining two fields, you'll notice that a strange liney artifact is visible. Thanks to the way CRT televisions display images, it doesn't even have to process such interlaced frames. It will always display one field first, which is the first image, and then the other field comprising the next image. When displayed in quick succession, this creates the impression of your TV displaying a greater frame rate than it actually is displaying. And that is how interlaced frames remain, pretty much status quo till today. The difference over the lapse of these decades, however, is that interlacing used to be a lifesaver in more ways than one. Today, more often than not, it is a nuisance and adds to the price of your brand new HD TV. You see, when we threw out CRTs, we also threw out the concept of a scanning electron gun. Flat panel displays don't work the same way. Since they do not operate by scanning, they cannot benefit from the interlace format. In fact, Flat panel TVs receiving an interlace signal must first de-interlace it before it can be used. Otherwise, you'll see all the interlacing artifacts in TV shows. This means, of course, that a de-interlacing module must be present in your HD TV. Let us now wrap up today's lesson. Like TVs, fewer and fewer equipment work with interlaced footage anymore. As more and more TV stations around the world move towards digital broadcasting, they get the freedom to broadcast progressive video instead, while still being able to stick to broadcasting standards. Having said that, we still do occasionally come across the odd piece of interlaced footage, especially if you work a lot with standard definition broadcast video or equipment designed for use with that. 
The question is, do you know how to work with interlaced footage? Stay tuned next episode to find out. But this concludes today's lesson. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, you are watching 0612 TV.